using that for the cover of the book. Although we're not, oh, not really sure yet. Yeah, yeah. This is just a copy. It's not the actual photos of oh, yeah. the color. But sure. We, uh, I was going to show you a couple of things. That okay. We've sure. been I can do a little adjustment on the key here. I might. I don't it's a 14-inch track by mm -hmm. 6. Yeah. And uh, they were, I don't know, about an inch deep. Mm -hmm. But uh, he says, you know, I wasn't sure. I, I thought I should probably tell you. You know, he waited like a, a month well, or more. Well, you know, well, you know uh, there's a lot of people that have uh, seen things around here that haven't told anybody for for years. Absolutely. And they finally told me. Uh, yeah. And I'm sure there's more that haven't told me. I, I've had a real similar kind of thing. You know, talk to people. I, I run into a guy. Oh. It must have been 15 years ago. Uh -huh. We were out, had kids out playing in the snow. We were running into this other family, and I had my camera, and the guy walks up, and he says, well, are you getting any good shots? And I said, well, I hope so. And <laughs> I kind of went with it and told him what I was doing. Mm -hmm. And he says, you know, we had a hunting camp in Scamini County area at that time. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, we had a, had a hunting camp up one time, and this big gray one come walking right up to the edge of camp and stood there and just kind of looked at us. And then, you know, we sat there and didn't know what to do. We, none of us were close to our rifles, so it walked away. And his wife came up at that time and she said, you never told me that. That was 17 years before. Mm -hmm. And uh, he says, well, you know, I thought you thought I'd think I was crazy. Well, this is true. I mean, this is exactly what happens around here. Many people, one guy that I've known said, true oh boy. Well, I, the first I remember him was when we first had our first little store, and that was... About 48 years ago. Wow. And he told somebody last year that he had seen tracks. Uh, no, I beg your pardon, didn't see, he seen one. So, uh, and uh, uh, w several guys were with him to see it. And he hadn't told anybody until then. Okay. And he told his wife, and, and then it the, got around to me, and so I, I asked him, and he said, yeah. And he told me what it was. You know, I, I mentioned to you know, about the, the mangled trees. This is one we found right up on the 13 road two years ago. Mm -hmm. And well, yeah, I, I've seen a lot of strange things in that, but that kind of defies logic. But And it's really a lot like the story of the Gilyuk uh, in the Tex Cobb story, you know, from McLean's, McLean's Magazine? Sports of Field, I can't remember one of those two. Anyway, this was about six and a half feet off the ground, mm -hmm. standing alone, late July. It was a fresh, freshly done, and this was actually twisted you know, and bent over like that. I'm going to have to talk to somebody. That I have been intended to talk to some of the, a guy that's fishing game. I know one guy. I'm going to have to talk to him about this because what well, do I've heard bears will do this. Now I don't know. I, I'm, I'm kind of skeptical. I am too, because I was trying to figure out the mechanics how a bear would do that without yeah. leaving any other marks of any kind. But I know I, I, I've seen this. My son would tell me how he's seen it, mm -hmm. you know, and, but he's, oh, it's a bear. Well, is it a bear? I don't know. Now, I'm, I'm a little bit uh, dubious it's a bear. Well, but I'm, I'm not sure, though. I've known quite a few Indians, and they all say, oh, no, that's, that's what these guys do. So, well, it may be. It yeah. may be. Yeah. Uh, but if that's the case, there's a lot more going <laughs> to happen than yeah, the There is. Yes, there right. is. Because I, I know I, I run across for a lot of uh, firs that are maybe six, eight feet tall that all bend over. Well, and, and not just this type. We found this one mm -hmm. up in uh, uh, southern Washington about 12 years ago, and it's just a clean 90 degree break. None of the twigs are broken, and this is another picture a little farther back, but it's, it's in a closed canopy. It's all protected. There was no, and it wasn't just this one. About every hundred yards we'd find one. Well, I, I got something to tell you, too. Though. Now, uh, wait, wait, are you going to, which way are you leaving? North, up to 96. Oh, you're going up to 96. Up towards Handy, okay. Handy Camp. I was going to tell you, uh, up here uh, on top of the, so are you going west, uh, out here before you get to the first summit, mm -hmm. there's a lot of trees. I get to notice they busted off and there's white down the side where they yeah. split. But that was, that was snow. That sure. was snow. That was high. It was snow. Mm -hmm. And I know that was snow. But it was a lot of them, and I thought, you know, that possible could be something like that. You don't see it possible. I'm not saying it's possible. Right, right. But I was surprised. I looked at it. I said, what the heck's that bright stuff on there? And then I got to look closer, and there were a lot of them were broken out. Oh, sure. But it's right sure. after this fresh snow, mm -hmm. a real wet snow. Mm -hmm. and it, uh, 
but I was last year. Yeah. Well, see, that's what throws me again. This one was also in July, and these were freshly broken because mm -hmm. they were sapped. Yeah, so July would be something else. Exactly. No, we're not going to do it in July. I, I never thought about it until we, we actually, Jack and I hiked into this. It was back in a watershed where some of these guys were known a long time to, to yeah. hang out. Mm -hmm. And it, it took us five trips to get in there to actually find the place. Mm -hmm. uh, and there was a guy back in the 70s who was doing a film, tried to get back in there, had some problems with it. They got scared out of it or what yeah. happened. Yeah. And uh, anyway, we, we went back and climbed the ridge and found these mm -hmm. part way up the ridge. And we just thought, well, that's, that's pretty bizarre. It just didn't make a whole lot of sense to us. So anyway, yeah, it's just uh, kind of yeah, some of the well, stuff. Well, yeah, it, 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 it's, it's interesting. <laughs> it, we did, knew the, for sure mm -hmm. that there was some other force doing it besides the Bigfoot. Yeah, I right. Mm -hmm. Well, I always try to rule. And that's the last thing. Well, I that's true. Do. That's exactly right. And that's where I, I'm that, I'm real skeptical, but I've seen that so many times. Well, there has to be more than just tracks and sightings. That, that's my thinking. Well, what else do they do? You know, well, like oh, there's, there's no doubt. There's no doubt there's more than that. There's no doubt. Sure. And, and there's no doubt in my mind they exist. I mean, it's not just a figment of somebody's imagination. Well, I, I run up on two of them when I was 16, so I know. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, well, well, we haven't. I, I, I've seen tracks, but that's as much as I've seen. We, we never knew anything about it. I was 14 in 70, 1972, and, and a friend and I and I, a friend and I were walking to another mm -hmm. friend's yeah. house, and there was a couple inches of snow on the ground, and we come up on tracks there. And we had no idea what that was. It scared us because there were three different sets. Oh, yeah. And there was some fresh Poop. <laughs> frozen meat oh, really? that we had been eating. Well, you know, oh, go ahead. So anyway, we, we took off and, you know, of course, being 14, we were pretty excited by, you know, the prospect. Uh, the other friend's dad told us, he says, well, I think that's a, a Bigfoot. We're like, a big what? Yeah, what are you talking about? <laughs> and then, you know, a year later, we, about a year later, we'd forgotten about it. And uh, one night, my dog was going crazy, barking, so I let him go and grabbed a, a 22 and went out to the tree line to see what there was. And he got to the tree line and just froze and kind of growled deep in his throat and then he turned around and ran and I thought I've never seen him do anything like that before so I got up there and I could hear something moving in there in the leaves mm -hmm. so I kind of got up there and looked and the way the leaves were hanging you could only see from about here down but it was really obvious what it was and I thought what in the heck is this and then it dawned on me oh that must have been what made the tracks last year and then I thought well I don't know what to do about this. I don't have a big enough rifle to be shooting anything that big. <laughs> so I shot up in the air, and then another one come walking over and stood next to the first one. I thought, oh, really? time Ooh. to do what the dog did. <laughs> <laughs> Give up. <laughs> we we tracked, for about a tracked them both for about a mile the next morning before we lost the, the trail. Well, you know, and, and a lot of people are scared. No, I'm not. And, of course, I haven't. <laughs> They've had some <laughs> my opportunity to hurt people. They haven't done I, for the only time I think they might is, like you say, if you took a shot at one and uh, mm -hmm. uh, maybe wounded him or something like that, then look out. I'm sure you've got plenty of trouble with it. I wrote out some questions I'd like to okay. ask you. Sure. I'm interested in your history and what what you're, you're, you were kind of the center of the, of the, <laughs> the whole deal here. You know, everybody says that. I, I, I kind of laugh. And, and, I'm flattered in a way and I laugh too because I, I never felt I was. And I still oh, sure. feel like it. But, but I, I think your part of this is interesting, and nobody ever, I don't think, ever really touched on it. So I, I guess what, I, what I'd like to, first of all, is, you know, a little bit about you, where, uh, sure. you know, where you were born and grew up, and... Well, I, I was born in Illinois, to be honest with you. Born in Illinois in 1923. I, uh, uh, we came to California uh, during the Depression when my, my father and uh, my mother had done real well on the farm, and... Uh, but things went real bad then. They lost everything in the crash of the banks, and they had, had the money was all gone. And uh, they sold as much as they could, and we uh, loaded us up. And we had <laughs> nine kids. Would you believe? No, I beg your pardon. Eight, eight at that time. Eight uh, kids, and we uh, came to California. He worked in at uh, Eureka at Hammonds. Hmm. He worked over there at Hammonds uh, during the uh, before. We don't know exactly when, but it was before the. 196 earthquake because he was in San Francisco at the time of the earthquake. Oh. He worked there and then he got down there and he lost everything he had in, in the quake. Well, it didn't lose in the quake, he lost in the fire afterwards. Yeah. But uh, he uh, then got back to Illinois and, and married and uh, uh, raised a family. Uh, they've done real well. 
and then the, the crash. And so we moved here, uh, uh, we moved to Eureka, and Hammonds was closed. He figured he'd go back to work at Hammonds. Mm -hmm. Hammonds closed. So uh, we wound up out here in Willow Creek. I believe, believe it or not, in 1933, we came into Willow Creek in 1933. And Willow Creek wasn't much then, I'll tell you. <laughs> Well, <laughs> really, I don't, we got a picture right here somewhere that, that, that kind of depicts what it was. But it was, uh, there was nothing here uh, other than uh, uh, a little bit of uh, gold mining, sniping, and so forth. The fact is, that's how come we got there. Somebody suggested, well, you might make some money sniping for gold on the Trinity River. And, well, that didn't work out. And he went up uh, towards Sons Bar, and that didn't work out either. So, so anyway, uh, but we still... Uh, found a little place down here up on the South Fork and, and we uh, uh, managed to uh, raise a garden and caught some fish and mm -hmm. we uh, ate more salmon. I, I got so tired of salmon. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and uh, a little venison mm -hmm. and uh, we uh, survived. And uh, finally they uh, had got just a little bit of money from, from their, uh, they still owned the place there in, mm -hmm. in Illinois and there wasn't much money coming from but there was some later on, okay. and so anyway, they wound up uh, established here in Willow Creek, and I uh, lived here till uh, I went in the service in 1941, uh, just before the war, wow. and I was in, in Pearl Har before Pearl Harbor. I was, uh, in fact, I was in uh, Detroit, Michigan. I was going to well, actually, I was at, at Dearborn. Uh, Ford River Rouge plant. And I was uh, uh, a school there that I was uh, I was attending uh, for the Navy, and uh, so when it happened, and so anyway, I finished up that winter there at Ford. It was interesting. I mm -hmm. I didn't meet Henry Ford. I saw him. Oh. And uh, uh, Edsel Ford was uh, one of our officers. Wow. <laughs> yeah, there. And so anyway, it was uh, it was interesting. Yeah, I, that sounds I, like it. It was interesting uh, a lot of ways. I, uh, they had, um, of course, they had their own sweet, they had the old steel mill uh, there on the, on the huge plant. I don't know how big. They had their own steel mill there, and they had a uh, uh, the local lo lo locomotives that run the switch engine. There's old switch engine running around there all the time. In fact, there's a couple of them. Uh, when we uh, had we marched over there to go to school, we had to watch out for the engines. And, and interesting. For an no firebox, no firebox on the engines. I'll see. Yeah, <laughs> but they, what they did was they had a boiler, but no firebox. They would run over the steel mill and get a charge of steam, oh. <laughs> and then they'd run and, and until they got low on, on steam, they'd cut loose and go back to the steel mill and get another shot of, of steam, and it was amazing. <laughs> no fireboxes, but it was. But it was. I'm sure this was a. Uh, a money saving because you mm -hmm. you eliminated a fireman and uh, they had in those days had to have a fireman mm -hmm. and so you eliminated that plus probably cheaper that way. Save on the yeah. people too. You probably day. had excess uh, uh, heat there on the steel. Sure. So, anyway, a very interesting time. Now. And uh, I was in the Navy for five and a half years. I uh, didn't see any action until the last six months and then I was over in Okinawa campaign. Uh, there, uh, when they dropped the uh, first bombs, I uh, fact is we were uh, unbelievable. We couldn't believe it. The guys were just absolutely yeah. stunned. We got notice of what happened. They sent a flyer out. Uh, nah, this, you can't have a bomb like that. Yeah. And then they dropped the second <clears> one. And, and uh, Japan said they were going to surrender. So uh, we well, I was on a seaplane there. I was on a seaplane there, I should tell you that. We operated a, a, a squadron of four engine uh, seaplanes. They were patrolled, they patrolled the uh, in North Sea, Inland Sea there, and everything to, uh, for the Japs. Anyway, uh, we, uh, uh, when the war was declared, they declared they were going to surrender, we up, pulled up the anchor and we headed for Japan. And we pulled into Sasebo, uh, Japan, before and like went right by Nagasaki uh, when it was oh, wow. still smoldering. Wow. And uh, we pulled in there and uh, uh, was there before the 
three days later after we got there, here come the Marines invading us. <laughs> <laughs> a little late. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, the Japanese were no, there was no fight in them. That was it. They yeah. were ready to quit. So, uh, and so we was there until, uh, wasn't there very long. I think about a week, week and a half, and we uh, went to Hong Kong mm -hmm. and spent six weeks in Hong Kong or more than that. Left there, oh, just after, just before Christmas. But mm -hmm. we got home, we got into San Francisco, I think Christmas Day or something like that, we took us. Yeah. We, that ship was slow. <laughs> and 14 knots is all we can make, and, and not, uh, not very, sometimes we couldn't make 14 knots. So, <laughs> anyway, that was, and I got out of the Navy. I, uh, uh, then I didn't get out till 46. And, uh, I worked here, uh, around here, and went back to Illinois for a while, and got married, come back, and worked on the coast for five years, and then come back out here and started this store. And, that, and what type of store was that? Well, it was a store, it, well, we started out as strictly a, a a five and dime store, they used to call them, or a variety store. And then at the end, before we closed, we were had branched out. We were clothing a whole bunch of stuff, and that was that was our downfall. Clothing is hard to do, you know. It's just a bad, bad thing. It was, but not, anyway, we uh, uh, were in that and, uh, quite a large store. It was eleven thousand square feet. And oh wow! The, the clinic down here, that was mm -hmm. our, our building, and it still is our building, but at uh, uh, any rate, uh, St. Joe uh, wanted to lease it, and they wanted it worse than we did, so we <laughs> leased it to them, and which has been the best thing that ever, ever happened to us, even though that it was sad and hard for me to get out of the store. I almost, I couldn't, I didn't almost just didn't handle it for about two or three years. I was bonkered, I'll tell you. Yeah. And, uh, so, and people still, oh, we missed your store. <laughs> well, sorry. Now, when, when did you first hear about something like the Bigfoot? Well, the first I recall anything, and I don't know, I think, and I'm going on, because uh, I wasn't paying, was probably when I came back from the service in 46. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure of this now, or when I got out uh, of the service. Uh, my brother, had said something about it. He says, why don't you and I go over there and help him catch that ape over across the river? Well, <laughs> I wasn't interested in catching the ape. I had better things to do. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, I was, you know, I was young and I was only but 20s, early 20s. Mm -hmm. And I, nah, I wasn't interested. So anyway, uh, that was the first I'd heard. And of course, it wasn't, nobody said it was a, a, a a Bigfoot or sure, ape or nothing. Well, the, word, the, the, word, the word I heard was ape. And some, they'd all heard it over there. Uh -huh. And that was over just here a couple of miles over right? Well, in fact, not even that near line, probably maybe a mile. But that was something that was fairly common knowledge. Yeah, people and all the people area. over there. And uh, they'd heard it and they no one knew what it was. And in fact, this one man, he wouldn't believe it was any animal that wasn't. It had to be a... a you could, you could, it had to be an animal that you could, was here. It's just something wrong with it. Mm -hmm. He said he thought it was a bear with a broken jaw. Oh. And, <laughs> well, that's true. In fact, uh -huh. it wasn't too many years ago before he died uh, that he'd been gone several years now, but we still had the store, and he was in the store. And I said, Claire, I said, what did you, uh, what do you think that was over there? Uh, he said, ah. He said, I think it was a bear with a deformed throat. So he told me himself. <laughs> and that was because of the noises they heard or something? Yeah, or? what they heard. But he yeah. said, that had to be a bear. It couldn't be anything else. It, could, it had to be a mountain lion. Or, but he said, I think it was a bear with a deformed throat. And so, uh, but that was, and uh, then uh, a lady who had found the tracks and her daughter had seen the tracks, or had seen it mm -hmm. beside the tracks. Uh, we had the, the first cast I had made was laying on the counter in our, our store. And she'd come in and she said, Now, you know, that's what was over our place 10 years ago. That's uh, the same thing. So, tied you right together. Now, how did, how did outsiders come to 
take an interest in Willow Creek, do you know, I mean, or, or contact you, people like John Green or, or Bob Titmus, people like that? Well, I, I don't know exactly, but I think, <coughs> I, I, well, for one thing, I, I think news spread pretty rapidly. And, and that's from the, the fella in Eureka that came out here with Jerry Crew? Well, that was another story. <laughs> uh, actually, this lady, a very good friend of ours, it's a name of work, uh, Lynn Betty Allen. Mm -hmm. She wrote uh, for uh, the column, she was a, a guest uh, column in the Times paper at that time. I believe. Andy Ginzoli had a column called RFD, America, RFD, something like that. Anyway, and she was a guest on that, and she wrote in that column, and I'm sure she put my name in there. I don't remember, but I'm sure she did. And anyway, she kept after me, and she said, Al, you should get yours. She said, that's good for Willow Creek. And I, at first I said, I'm not having anything to do with it. That's a hoax. I don't want nothing to do with it. And that's exhausting. God, I told her. I wouldn't do it. And in fact, is they tried to sell me a copy of the first Titmus cast. You know, mm -hmm. or, or, well, no, first copy of Jerry Cruz's cast that Titmus had copies of, right. and I wouldn't buy it. I said, no, I'm not going to buy it. <laughs> I'm not a hoax. I'm not going to have anything to do with this hoax. And uh, so then when, uh, when Betty, she finally got me interested, and I went up, and, and well, I, when I went up, I wasn't interested. I said, okay, I'll take you up. And so our boys were small, and uh, my wife, we all got in a station wagon, we took her, and and this other guy and the boys, we all went up there. And now is that up, up Bluff Creek where yeah, they, up there they, they were building the roads in? Uh, yeah, time? We, we went up to Laos <coughs> Camp. Uh, that's where we stopped and, and, and went up from there. I mean, I don't know and where. What time period would that would have been, roughly? What? what time period was that? What year, roughly? I can tell you really well. <coughs> well, that's a, that's a cast we make. Uh, I'll just give you one minute. To sell. And that's on there the time. Oh, okay, uh, thank you. October 20th, 1967. Well, <sighs> so we. Uh, uh, well, this was in 1963 then. That oh, 60, yeah, oh, yeah, 63, I think, yeah. Okay. Anyway, uh, that's when we. Uh, she taught me to go on up, and we went up, and. And then uh, she said, Al, she said, why don't you go down in the creek? I, I still wasn't I went too impressed. On the tracks on the, on the road, they, were, they covered them up with bark, and we uncovered them, and sure enough, there were tracks there. And I understand that, because the logging trucks were going by all the time, and sure. they'd, they'd have filled them with dust otherwise, but we wouldn't be tracks left. In fact, the rest of the tracks were wiped out from that very thing. But anyway, we, did, we made casts of those tracks, and then she suggested, why don't you, why don't you go down the creek and tell her what's going on? Maybe you'll find it. And I sure did. My oh, wife right. insists to this day that somebody <laughs> made them for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, know, you don't know, by golly. You know, you don't know for sure. And uh, so anyway, uh, that, that hooked me, though. And I made a lot of trips up there after that. And, and there was, and I don't know, other than the fact that, that through her column, and I don't know that she wrote about me. I got an idea she did, but uh, and so anyway, the word spread, and so it was. So whenever somebody came into town, you were the guy to see. That's right, and so about the same time, Roger Patterson had stopped in the store to see me, and and John Green, not the same time, at right. different times. Just and, these everybody and, sort of started yeah. converging. On and then uh, of course. I don't think I ever saw Renee except when he was with John. Mm -hmm. uh, they came down here together, as I recall. And uh, Titmus, I can't remember. I think I saw Titmus other than with John, but I can't remember. That's been so long ago, I don't sure. remember. And I didn't keep record of one day. Now, did the loggers or road builders ever stop in the store and tell you things they'd seen? Or? Most generally not. Really? Well, you know what, they, what the reason was? In fact, is some of them told me afterwards, after the fact, Hey, we saw tracks in our, our show too. We've been like all, all these people up there in our way. We're trying to make sure, a living. Sure. You know? And in fact, it's a lot of them. It simply hampered your operation when a bunch of guys went up there with cameras and, and especially you get the news media and everything else up there, you know. And that's mm -hmm. what happened. And a lot of people came in the store and I <laughs> shake my head. They came in and 
had driven all the night from Los Angeles or someplace else and going to come up here and catch him over the weekend. You know? <laughs> I, I, honestly, that's exactly what they told me. But I just, oh, come on, you guys, you're crazy. But uh, uh, anyway, uh, and then it, it, over the years I've, I've come to realize that they're everywhere. They're not just up there. Mm -hmm. And this uh, is, you're, you're, just ta you're talking about the wrong thing in the way you say they're up there. Sure. But that's all right. That's what they think. That's okay. Mm -hmm. It's uh, like John <laughs> told me one time. He said, that's, he said to the big foot hunter, that, that's mech up there. <laughs> so, you know. Oh, sure. And so it is. It's, but that's, that's kind of the way uh, I got into it. And it's, uh, mm -hmm. uh, I still don't consider myself anything. I never have, really, but that's okay, uh, um, I guess. <laughs> well, when, when Roger and, uh, and Bob Dimmel got the film, they, they came to see you, is that, that correct? Well, yeah, what happened was, uh, John uh, had called me on a Thursday, I think. Uh, anyway, John had called me and he said, Al, would you meet my charter plane? in?" Uh, uh, in Orleans, and that there was an air uh, strip there. Then there isn't any more. It's a good thing because they told me to be killed. <laughs> Maybe there was. I can't remember if somebody killed there or not. Anyway, uh, meet their charter plane in Orleans and take them and the tracking dog up to the film, or up there where they found the tracks. Mm -hmm. And I said, Oh, sure, I'll do a good job. I, my wife, she'd take care of the clothes, the store, and what have you. So. Older son and I got in the station wagon, and, and I don't know how she got home. We could have had that one car there. But somebody apparently took her home. But anyway, after she, but one of the girls in the workforce would take her home. Anyway, uh, Mark, uh, Mike and I uh, went to uh, New Orleans, and we uh, waited for the plane to come in. And when they sat down, why, uh, uh, they, uh, John and uh, the dog handler, and I'm not sure who, who was with us, and I, uh, I think it might have been DeHendon with us. I can't remember our tip us. I'm not mm -hmm. sure which, one or the other. Now, this is before Roger got the film, is that right? Uh, that's correct. And <clears throat> so we went up there and uh, uh, saw uh, uh, who we went up. Uh, uh, well, we got in the, in the car and started to go up and put the dog in the back of the station wagon and, and uh, Mike and, uh, uh, and I was driving, and Mike was in the back seat, and, and uh, I can't remember how. It went. Anyway, the dog handler, I, he was saying, he said, you know, he said when that, that he said that dog is going to follow, and when he gets there, he, very quickly that going to take care of that dog, and he says, and I'm next. That's exactly what he said. They, they were afraid. They were. He said, now this was a dog handler himself. Mm -hmm. But he uh, said, afraid the creature was going to get them. That's right. And so I didn't think too much about it. I, I forgot about it. Anyway, we went in and we stopped in a little store there at Bluff Creek. At that time, there was a little store there. We stopped to get some things to eat before they, they didn't brought anything. <laughs> we, they stopped and got some stuff. And, and John told me I loaned him $100. I don't remember. But I think he worked for it. He said I loaned him $100. And anyway, uh, because he didn't have time to, to get his money exchanged sure. before he come down. So anyway, uh, they went in and bought some grub and everything to take up that night. He went to camp out that night. And uh, we came back out and that dog handler just had a fit. Here Mike is in the back seat and he, of course he's just a, I don't know why he's a teacher, I don't know how old he was. Here he was, his arm around that dog's neck. <laughs> and he, <laughs> Oh, he, he, that dog's a killer. <laughs> he couldn't believe it. But you know, I guess a dog knew uh, a kid and uh, knew there was no harm. Mm -hmm. Bother him a bit. The dog, <laughs> the dog. <laughs> anyway, we got up there. Got up there just before dark. And uh, uh, there were uh, tracks. Uh, I only saw two sets of tracks. It, originally, there were three. Mm -hmm. but uh, And they said there was, well, I never saw the third one. But I did see two sets. Two different sides of it. And uh, so, anyway, um, I promised, uh, uh, okay, Roger, Roger Patterson, that I would 
uh, let him know if Trax showed up. He, he had asked you previously. That's right. He asked me previously if I'd call him. I said, sure, I will. Well, not dreaming that here it is, and I had no idea how he and and John got along or anything else. I had no idea. So I didn't call until John left. Oh, I see. When John uh, and uh, <coughs> the, the guys left, I said, oh, okay, and then I turned around and called Roger. And I told him what I did. I said, I'm sorry, I, but I'm just concerned of how you guys get along or something. And so he said, well, I think I'll come down. And I said, well, I'm probably going to clear out of the country, but now I'm thinking, oh, one or something you know, or two. But I thought, oh, they're probably gone. And he said, well, I, I've been wanting to come down. Anyway. I think I'll come down. And that's the last I heard from him until the day he took the film and he stopped in front of the store and told me. He I called see. me from the front of the store <coughs> and told me, now he says, I, I got a picture of the son of a buck. And that was, <laughs> and uh, uh, anyway, that's what happened there. Uh, and since then, and long after that, only a couple of years ago, I found out who found the tracks in the first place. Really? <laughs> yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Still alive. Guy I know him. He's, uh, I hesitate to reveal his name because I'm not sure quite. <coughs> I, he's an Indian fellow, and I don't. Uh, I'm, believe it or not, it's taken me a long time to get some of these people's, uh, uh, um, not to be any, uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not concerned about talking to them about these things. Mm -hmm. I've talked to them about other things before, but I was concerned that way. And so I hesitate now <coughs> to mm -hmm. do something that's going to stop the trust there. Sure. So, so I don't do that for that reason. But I did fight, I do know him. And, a nice guy, and he said, Al, he told me, he said, Al, he said, you know, where, the, where those tracks were? He said, that was way up there on the ridge, way back, and he said, I was the last guy out. Was he part of the logging crew up there? Yeah, yeah. He was running, he was running that show right there. Oh, I see. Time. He wasn't the owner, but he was running. And he says, I was the last guy out that night, <clears throat> and I was the, last, the first one in the morning, and he had, he had just had a little bit of shower. Mm -hmm. And he said, you could tell, these are fresh tracks, there couldn't be anything else. And here they were, way down this road. Hmm. It was right up on top of where he went down the ridge, and, and the, all those tracks. I'll be there. And, uh, so uh, he was, he said, and it was, they had to come in, if they came in any other way, to make false, fa fake track, it had to come clear from Pequot up over the ridge, which was a long ways through there. And there weren't too many roads in there yet, no, were there? No. And there still isn't that many, but in that area. But anyway, he cleared up there, and then it said it was almost impossible for somebody to walk in and make fake tracks like that. He said it was almost impossible to do it. So anyway, that was the kind of sideline. But that's uh, uh, when I really uh, got to know John. I mean, from then on, John was really, and he told, he didn't tell, he just told me this last year or two years ago. They had the symposium. That was one of the reasons how I got his. Uh, he was, Alan, I'll do anything about because he did that for me. Okay, <laughs> I don't remember doing it. <laughs> it's just, you know, I, uh, but anyway, uh, so uh, anyway, Roger called me from front of the store for me. He got a picture of me. And then uh, I talked to him a long time that night. He said, well, we've got to get back up there. And then this uh, uh, other friend of mine uh, worked for the forestry. He called me then later. And he said, Al, he said, come on, you've got to come down to Forestry and uh, talk to him. We're, we're, we're going to be in there. And let's, we want to talk to him. <laughs> okay, I went down. And so he and I both, Syl McCoy and I both, went down to, uh, with uh, Roger Patterson and with Gimlin and talked. That, I don't know how long we talked. A lot longer we should because they were anxious to get up there, back to the horses sure. when we, <laughs> we left, when yeah. we left down here. So I don't know, it was late. Then you got in there and then had problems getting out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But anyway, that's clear away from Gimlin. I mean, from uh, De Hendon, But anyway. oh, uh, not doesn't matter. But it was a uh, very interesting uh, uh, experience. Those things. Uh, I, so many things I would like to. I'd like to see one. I don't expect to anymore. But I should never know either. You never know. Now, after after the film was made, <clears throat> it seemed like it got really quiet up there. Did was anything seen again after that or? No, to my knowledge, there wasn't. But that doesn't mean anything. Sure. You know, like I say, so many people did not. And there was so much controversy 
uh, about uh, this thing being uh, fake and what mm -hmm. have you. That, uh, I think a lot of people don't didn't want to get uh, wound up in something like this. Sure. And I don't blame them. I, I would say the same way. And the fact is, I know people right today that uh, don't want to because they say, well, I don't want to get into this. Mm -hmm. I don't want to get into this thing here. And so they don't want to be, uh, and they may tell me, uh, but uh, so many of them don't want to tell me because they're afraid. And like I, uh, this uh, with National Geographic, that just made me sick because uh, some of the people that, that told me, they didn't want to come up front anyway, but then they didn't like the way they were portrayed in this, this film. Oh, I'm not familiar with that oh, one. Oh, aren't you? Oh, they beat us up. National film. Geographic did a film on this? Yes, oh yeah, a year ago. And uh, I busted my butt to get people for them that uh, had seen them, you know. In fact, about half a dozen people would, came forward. Mm -hmm. Would you know something? They had to portray Wallace and some of these people uh, as, and it made us look like we were a bunch of fools. Now, you, you knew Ray Wallace? Oh, yeah, I knew him. And he used to run the logging crew up there, didn't well, he? Well, he, he, he had a bunch of uh, loggers up there. Yeah, he, <coughs> he, had, he was uh, quite a uh, quite a wheel, I mean, as far as he, he contracted, uh, did a lot of contracting and road building. And uh, this wasn't the only place he was at. In fact, he was one of the guys that was up there, uh, one of the guys that, that knew him very well. In fact, is he uh, he told me that his uh, that Ray actually uh, practically raised him. He was an orphan, mm -hmm. and uh, Ray uh, gave him a job and, and took care of him. Uh, you know, and he says, I don't think Ray did all this crap that there's Oh, the fake stuff. You yeah. Mean. Well, now he and I both agree that Ray did. He he was a great a great for a joke, mm -hmm. but he wasn't a gay uh, for just to try to fake this whole thing and make it look like. I see. It. Yeah. Uh, I don't. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind. He was a prankster. He he loved it. But he was. But like uh, this fellow said, he wasn't up hardly ever up there. Mm -hmm. He was out someplace else, uh, bidding more jobs, keep the crews working. I, I know, I read somewhere where he actually saw some of the droppings. Well, uh, yeah, he said he did, and, and I don't know. fairly I impressed don't with it. I don't want to say he didn't. Yeah. Uh, but he, yeah, in fact, he told me he was. Uh, that, you know, and he was impressed. And, and I don't, other people have said, say, I've seen somewhere. But mm -hmm. I'm not so sure. In fact, there's a lot of passing film site up there. Really? Yeah, yeah. In fact, just before the symposium. And I... I should have probably uh, uh, captured some of it and brought, maybe for analyzing, I don't know. But you know, it had the consistency that you would say, well, that might look like a, uh, maybe a horse mm -hmm. or a donkey, a mule, sure. something, a, a, a bird. We've, we've seen it up there, and it, lots uh, of it. Look, it had the uh, consistency of like a, a, almost a horse, like a biscuit, you know. Sure, uh, but, if but it, it is shaped different. Yep, but you know something? If it was eating uh, a lot of, of leaves and mm -hmm. stuff like this, which apparently they do, uh, just like the uh, the panda, mm -hmm. only apparently it's dead more. And so I suspicion that it would look much like that. Uh, yeah, we I actually brought a sample back in July, uh -huh. and uh, I I've actually prepared it with acrylic, so it looks identical and it'll stay preserved, mm -hmm. but. The quantity is easily the amount a large horse would yeah, do, yeah. and it's pro the diameter is about two and a half, two and three quarter inches across. Yeah. I've hunted bear for years and deer and elk. It's not bear. It's not bear. There. That's not bear. No, not, not that. I don't think uh, a grizzly or Kodiak. I don't know. Maybe, but I don't think a, I don't, a black bear was on no, that big. No. In fact, we we were up just yesterday. We saw lots of. We actually saw it. We see a bear every time we go up there. Sure. And well, uh, lots bear. of bear there. Oh, yeah. oh this, this country is just loaded with bear. Uh, in fact, just about every time we've gone up there, we see the big droppings. Mm -hmm. And usually quite a few of them. Mm -hmm. This time, nothing. Oh, yeah. We think they've well, bugged out somewhere else. Know, but I, 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 I've always said that I think they're nomadic. Yeah, oh, sure. And uh, they're here a few years, maybe someplace else. Uh, but I don't, uh, I, I think, I, I really do. I don't, they're not. They're not uh, uh, migratory. 
I don't know well, I'm sure of that, but I think they're maybe nomadic. Well, I think <clears throat> from my, my first couple years of college were anthropology oh. and reading about gorillas and their behavior, how they feed, they'll, they'll have a large area, usually about 10, 10 12 kilometers, mm -hmm. and what they do is they'll exhaust a food supply in one area, yeah, they, they move. and then they'll move. But they might not visit the same area that they first exhausted for up to a dozen years. They'll, they'll rotate their feeding areas, and I think these guys are doing the same thing. Well, it could be very well. Only on a have you scale. read uh, uh, John Vandernagel's book? Uh, I've seen it. I, I think it's a good book. Uh, it is answered a lot of questions for me just like that. Of what he, he goes into what the great apes do and uh, like the noise mm -hmm. and beating on things and, and uh, things that the great <coughs> apes do. Uh, the odor. Mm -hmm. uh, so some of these things was very interesting. It answered a lot of questions for me. It isn't the answer to the whole thing, but it didn't answer questions that I could say, well, all right, that's reasonable. But one time I said, oh, come on now. Sure. I don't believe this. Let's see. Uh, let's see if I've got all the questions here. I, I guess the only other thing I was interested in is how did you, how did you uh, come about putting the museum together? Well, you know, the the, uh, the museum uh, was put together here initially by a group of people, uh, of Oak Creek people, including uh, my sister, and uh, I small part, maybe back in the back, not really a lot. I understand it was initially, <laughs> according to her, my son, the youngest son, uh, mentioned to his, to her husband now, which is deceased, uh, that too bad we don't have a museum with some of the local stuff. Not, not Bigfoot. Right. right. Just, uh, and so, consequently, uh, they wound up putting this together with that, uh, a group of people in Willow Creek, just all different walks of life. And uh, uh, so then when uh, Renee, not Renee, when uh, uh, Bob Titmus died, uh, he made it known to John Green that he had liked for him some of his things to come here, mm -hmm. providing we would have a display. separate room, not just, he said, no one went over the corner, we want a separate room or something larger. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, from that, I went to the Chamber of Commerce, and they weren't interested. I, I went to <coughs> the uh, museum board then, and, and uh, they went for it. Uh, one guy, though, was so dead set against about being a hoax, he resigned from the board. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but at any rate, that resulted, and they uh, built that wing over there. I can't, uh, raised a hundred and something thousand dollars. Is that right? And built that. Got the whole thing built. So, uh, one of the talked to local uh, Chrysler agency in out in town and putting on golf tournaments mm -hmm. to uh, pay for it. And then uh, through him and some other things, we got uh, some of uh, Simpson and some of them donated a, a lot of you know, the materials. And I'll be there. Uh, we got, uh, built that building for yeah. I don't know how much, it is, but uh, I'm not really sure the cost of it, but way yeah. less than hundred thousand dollars. You get a lot of people that uh, come through and mm -hmm. yeah. And a lot of interest. All, all, uh, all the work, labor in that went in was donated. It was a whole oh, lot. that's great. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, you could. Otherwise, that building would probably cost you a quarter of a million dollars, probably at least. Oh, sure. <coughs> so, um, anyway, that's what happened. It was, as I got put together. And, uh, and it's really, it's some people, uh, there's some people that die hard yet today that say, ah, that's Bigfoot. We don't need Bigfoot. <laughs> of all things, one of the, the people that is this way is uh, the executive secretary of the Chamber of Commerce. And she's, because her husband was, and he was a friend of mine, as we who worked for the forestry for years and never saw anything, she, it doesn't exist because he didn't see it. Oh. Come on now, that don't, that don't make it. But that's the way she is, and, and I'll tell you, I, it's ridiculous. I, it's hard for me sometimes not to put her in her place, but I don't do it. I, I'm, I guess I'm too much of a gentleman, I guess, <laughs> what it is, I don't know. But I, I, it's ridiculous. It, this has brought more people to Willow Creek, mm -hmm. and they should have known in the symposium to see what happened there, many people we had here. They had quite a turnout then. About 200. 
That's pretty good. And they come from all over the United States, and, and the fact is, people come from, from England and the Netherlands and, uh, to come to it. Not a lot of people, but there were people. Sure. And one guy, one of the speakers from Russia, <laughs> he came over. Was that uh, Porchnev or? Uh, no, it was. Oh, I can't remember his name. Uh, but anyway, one of, the, one of the speakers was from Russia. And there, there have been two from Russia, excepting that <coughs> the other guy couldn't get his visa oh. put together. <laughs> but, well, is there, is there anything that you'd like to say about the issue itself from uh, your perspective? or uh, The issue of... Of, uh, of the Sasquatch, yeah. Well, except I, I absolutely believe it. I've come to believe it I don't think, I don't, in a long time. In fact, is when I really positively become a believer was during putting all this together, and I'll tell you why. And I don't have any idea where <clears throat> where your religious beliefs are or anything else. But I'll tell you what happened. We uh, uh, have uh, 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 at that time we uh, had a Bible study at our house every Friday night. Okay, and so after uh, this one Friday night, after we put the deal together. And, and the museum said, well, we'll do it. And uh, so uh, after it was over, I, I told the Bible study that night, I told the group, I said, told what, what happened. <coughs> We've done this. That's and, the symposium? Yeah. Well, not the symposium, oh. the, the, the museum. The museum, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> but, but the museum in here, we had none of the stuff to get down here or nothing. Yeah, see. So uh, <coughs> we, uh, I told them. And, and so, uh, and then the rest, they all left. and except one couple. And then she came up to me and she said, Al, you know, I saw one. <laughs> and here she, she told me and, and uh, she said, but I don't want you to tell anybody. My family's laughed at me too much already. I don't want anybody, more people laughing at me. And so that is when I truly become a believer. That, uh, there's no doubt in my mind, she wasn't lying. And she, uh, they had a hunting camp, or had a, a, a cabin somewhere on the, up off the planet below uh, Martin's Ferry there and backed up a little ways. And uh, they were hunting, um, and well, she wasn't hunting, but, but she was at the cabin. And she said, she and her mother, I think, she said, were sitting outside on lawn chairs. Uh, and uh, her son came up the road, apparently the road came up and, and underneath them where they could see it. And, and, she said she saw it coming, and she said, there's something following him. And as it got closer, she saw what it was. And it got up there, and, and she said it just stood right there and looked at her. And she could tell me right exactly what it looked like. Mm -hmm. And I, what I'd like to do, and I still would like to do it, I'd like to get a, a, I just haven't been able to get, put it together. And that is a, a, a sketch artist that could mm -hmm. pick her brain and, and see, just what did she did see? Mm -hmm. you know? But uh, I mean, do it. But anyway, I I thought it would be trained. Several people have seen them. I can, mm -hmm. I'd love to get. Al, has she ever looked at that image or any of the images? Oh yeah. And oh, has yeah. she said it looks similar, or oh, she yeah. say it looked different? Oh yeah, yeah she did. Oh, it definitely says similar. Uh huh. Yeah. And she's uh, oh, she's uh, anything that is exciting to her. And of course, this was uh, this one is. Uh, uh, Enhanced, you know, this is not a true image. Uh, he took it and turned it uh, enhanced it. But I have uh, seen it since then. Uh, uh, this uh, M.K. Davis, you know him? I don't think so. He's from uh, Texas, Louisiana, down there somewhere. <laughs> he's probably a friend now. Anyway, he uh, uh, came by here uh, all, a couple months back, and I was sitting in my the living room, my wife and went to bed, and I was sitting in there, and the, the drapes were open, and all of a sudden, here was lights shining in the window. And, and uh, I whoa, what's going on here? <laughs> I got, and here's M.K. Davis. He came in, and he, he wanted to talk to me. And we talked. And he had a picture uh, as big as the one we got in there. Oh, a true photograph. He had enhanced, he was able to take, know. and by pulling colors out, and he had this picture of Bigfoot out there, out from the Patterson film. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was so much clearer. And the fact is, he has done so much work. I, I, boy, the man has done a lot of work on that. Mm. But he said, but pulling colors in and out 
he'd be able to clear those things up. That's amazing. Sure. He, uh, yeah, Ed Tripp and I, uh, but I was a guy had done so much work. I, the first one I had in there, I, I brought the blood for him. Well, it was uh, the top thing on the phone, and, and he had this, he shipped it out here. It cost us 200 bucks, but it must have cost him a bunch of money to get it out here. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we got it out, <laughs> and that was so out of focus and everything, you know, and it's still in there underneath this other picture. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, uh, he, he really impressed me with that one. It, it's really something. But it's, uh, it's strictly a, a, a picture that he can't, uh, it's, uh, you know, he doesn't have permission actually sure. to do commercial because it's, he's strictly, he's, his is just strictly research. Mm -hmm. And so he can show me and things like this, but he can't do anything else with it. It is good. It's just really well worth it. It's too mm -hmm. bad we couldn't get in here in the museum. And actually, I, I don't know whether we can have permission. We have, we have written permission from Renee to right. use that one Film. And I'm not sure that that well, is that one, but I guess if it's that same one, we would maybe have... Well, you know, when Renee it. died, he uh, he did own 100% of the still rights. Well, I, I understand. I, I never did. I, I mean, I've heard a lot of stories on this, and I'm right. not going to... I knew Renee for 25 years, knew him very well, mm -hmm. and uh, in fact, I, I never saw it. He had it on a slide. Mm -hmm. And yeah. in the 80s, I, I was at his house, and I said, Renee, drag those slides up, let's look at them. So we were sitting around one evening and he, yeah. out by his little trailer he had, mm -hmm. and on slide, those were incredibly clear pictures. Yeah, this is what I... Them up and, mm -hmm. and there, there were a lot of other things I, I know about Rene, and I think that he actually had the original film. Well... He said he didn't, but he told me he had it. Yeah, I, was, I was told that he... He had the original cast I, I that told, Roger made. I was told he stole. <clears throat> he did. Mrs. Patterson talked to uh, Jack about 12 years ago, and she said, well, it was coincidental. I mean, him and Roger were partners before Roger died. Oh, really? And, and well, I, I, think, I think that's how Rene sort of got his hands on yeah, right. the I rights know, to the stuff. I had no idea. I had no idea. And, um, and, and Rene was sort of, well, I, I met Rene when I was 17, and he sort of took a liking to me and took me under his wing and mm -hmm. sort of groomed me as a, as a Sasquatch hunter mm -hmm. after that. Yeah. And... Uh, you know, over the course of time when he figured out that I was, wasn't going to tell on him, I think, mm -hmm. he would tell me things and show me. Mm -hmm. And by 1992, we did a, uh, a big barbecue and potluck at Mount St. Helens. Mm -hmm. and had about 400 people show up. Oh, and, wow. and he did a slide presentation mm -hmm. as part of that. Well, the following day, he said, wow, you guys, that was great. Nobody's ever done anything like that in this whole business. We drew that many people, and it really went up well. And we had an agreement with him, a business partnership, <coughs> to reproduce the actual castings, the two of the three that Roger made when he got the film. And of course they had broken in half. Yeah. So we knew they were the originals. And we repaired them and made molds from those. And he also gave us permission to use the still photos to make products. And we were going to reproduce some of the books, Roger's book, uh, Renee's book with Don Hunter, and some other things. Uh, the thing that and then he, he changed his mind supposedly later, but we had had that stuff. So I, I knew when he had the cast that when he told me years before that he also had the film, mm -hmm. that you know, and Mrs. Patterson said that when he was in Yakima at that particular time, the film and the cast were in the lawyer's office. The lawyer was out. Supposedly, you know, this stuff just vanished mm -hmm. from the lawyer's desk. And she said, it's a little coincidental that Renee happened to be in there bugging the attorney to get the stuff, and then it vanishes. Yeah. You know, and, and the proof is, I think, that we had cast. Yeah. Well, yeah, I would say so, yeah. I, I don't, I, you know, I didn't know uh, what happened. I know that, that uh, I know now that there's apparently a um, little bitterness from the, on her part. And I, I don't know. So. And uh, I just, I don't know what to say. I don't know. I don't want to get into it. I, oh, I, no. I do. I, I do like. You know. I know if if, if he does have the original film, uh, I know that this uh, uh, M.K. Davis would love to be able to use it because the thing of what his 
he's got a second generation film or, or maybe a third and right. that he's working with. And it would be much better if he had the first generation. Sure. Now, I know Mrs. Patterson still owns, she still controls the film. That's right, but she but, doesn't have the original film. Right. But as, as far as the stills go and being able to use those, Renee never did anything with the copyright. It's in total limbo and oh, probably right. in the uh, public domain by Even now. his son isn't really uh, The son locked everything up. Oh, he did. And, and I wrote him and told him some things that he told me about the boys. Mm -hmm. You know, they never told them mm -hmm. that how he regretted, you know, ignoring them. And, and I never heard a word back from him. Mm -hmm. Well, they were supposed... We were supposed to have gotten a, a, some of Renee's things. We never got them after he died. We were supposed to a whole big box of stuff that we were supposed to have. Well, you know, Renee told me he didn't want anybody having anything. Isn't that something? But he told me personally that he had these. It would have been nice if he had Yeah, well, that's right. And we would like to have them. Mm -hmm. But uh, at the same time, uh, I don't want to cause a lot of problems. I mean, sure. you're not going to do it, change anything. If you, yeah. So if if we finally get them, I would be love to have this. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to uh, jump up and down and stomp and stuff like right. that. Right. Yeah, so it's just, you know, it's, uh, and the same way there were some other things too that, that from, uh, oh, from, uh, that we were supposed to get, to get from, uh, uh, um, what's his name? Oh, died too here. Boy. Prince? Uh, Prince, yeah, Robert Ro yeah. Prince. We were supposed to get a, a lot of his things. But, <laughs> but the last minute, uh, Grover uh, apparently decided to, uh, before he died, to give it to somebody else. Yeah, he split everything up between, because we got some things from him right before he, he passed away. Bought, bought some casts and things from him. If we'd have been there, if I'd have been up there, probably I'd have got it. But, I'm sure. but, but he didn't. Uh, by the time I just communicated with his wife and everything, and, and by the time he passed away, why, uh, it was too late. Well, it's no big deal. It's just, we, sure, sure, we'd like to have some of the things, but it, we don't have to have mm -hmm. uh, One thing that did bother me, though, is it goes to the Smithsonian. That's the last you'll ever see of it. So yeah, I, right. Uh, right. This is one of the things John was saying so much this time. Smithsonian and other places, it'll go in a, in a storeroom downstairs. Yep, nobody will ever see it. Never see it again. Have you so had I, any uh, contact with Bob Gimlin over huh? the years? Have you had any contact with Bob Gimlin Not over the years? Not until the symposium. I see. And Bob was here at the symposium. I've seen him a couple of times since. Is that right? He's been down. Mm -hmm. uh, seen him. Not a lot, but a, a little bit. Mm -hmm. but, uh, so first I had seen Bob after the, that, that night. Wow, that's quite a, quite a time in between now. Well, you see, I didn't get up there. I, I could not leave. My wife didn't want to go up there mm -hmm. very well. And I, uh, it was hard for me to get away from the store. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and particularly... Uh, by myself. I, I didn't like to leave my wife and she didn't want to go. And, uh, well, we went up one time, we seen up to John Green's place, we saw him, went up and seen him mm -hmm. and, and uh, his wife, uh, June. And, uh, but that's, oh boy, a long time ago too. Do you, uh, do you speak to Bob on the phone or? What? Do you speak to Bob on the phone ever? Uh, I have, but not recently. I see. And we never, I never did very much. I see. Uh, you know, and uh, so. But I, I, I do occasionally uh, talk to John Green once in a while. Mm -hmm. but, uh, How's he doing these days? Uh, he's doing fair. He's doing pretty good. It, it's uh, his wife. He's got probably his wife too. Uh -oh. But she's going blind. Oh, no. And, uh, yeah. and so it's, uh, it's well, you know, <laughs> we get up our ages, you know, something's yeah. going to get you and get, or get you your wife or something else. Yeah. And uh, John's like I am. He's in good health. I think he's in good health. Now, See, he had polio when he was young. Oh, right. And uh, some of the polio would come back on some of these people. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, that's one uh, John uh, left him up with a speech impediment a little bit. I don't know if you've ever noticed or not. It's been a long time since I've talked to him. My wife looking for me. Yeah, we should probably. Well, I got that, and that's probably a fellow named the Wright probably had it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, we just thought maybe he'd heard something or knew a little bit of the history back in there. It was just something we were curious about. Yeah, I, I don't know anything that I might find somebody that knew, but I don't right now. I, I understand. Know. That's all right. That's yeah. all right. That I'd ask. Well, that should do it then, Al. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. All right, great. Great. Well, we sure well, appreciate it. Well, I, I hope that uh, it's uh, worth not taking enough notice that I, I, you know, I was sitting back watching, but sure. I wasn't paying that much attention. I wasn't. I wasn't, you know. 
Mm -hmm. And so anything, I knew Jerry Crew. Mm -hmm. I knew him well. And I never asked him about it. And I saw him many years after. I still didn't ask him. And, and what really got me was, he wasn't alone when he took those first casts. Is that right? I That's didn't right. know that. No. There he was with the rest of the crew? There was, yeah. No, there, there were three other guys. Uh, uh, Jerry was there. A fellow the name of... of um, Well, J.Q. Hunter was another one, and uh, the third one was uh, Pascal. Uh, I don't know what was his first name. Oh, crime is six. He knew him well. He knew all three of them. Mm -hmm. and, but nobody knew about the other two until the symposium. I see. I never heard that either. And, uh, and then I found out that uh, uh, this uh, friend, Ruth, oh, uh, Ruth told me, uh, his, uh, Jerry's widow told me, and, uh, oh, what? Pascal, which one? Yeah, first name, shoot. No, he will. Anyway, he was with him, and then J.Q. Hunter. They all three, on Saturday, went up there, and they found tracks. They did have to run with them. No plaster Paris, no none. So they came back to Willowcreek to get plaster Paris. Well, it was too late that day. So, they went up Sunday. Well, Jerry and this other guy went up. J.Q. Hunter couldn't go because he was preaching that Sunday. He was a pastor <laughs> down there at the Bible church. So the, the two of them went up. And so they had pictures. And I had, and when we had, during the support, we had a original cast oh, wow. that he, they had made, one of them that he had. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I sent it back to Mrs. And she has, has since passed away, uh -huh. but uh, nevertheless, I mean, I had promised you, I, I'd like to have kept it, but I did not. Sure. And, uh, but uh, and just passed away, just passed away. Uh, very nice man. Mm -hmm. But he was killed. He they left here, and and he was a plumber. He uh, was uh, was killed in the accident out uh, west of or out east of. Um, uh, Oh gosh, in, in Oregon, shoot, up near Klamath Falls, up in North Klamath mm -hmm. Falls, uh, Bend, mm -hmm. east of Bend. He was in uh, an uh, 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 accident. He was, I understand he was going that way with a, with a pickup and a trailer loaded with plumbing supplies. He was a plumber. Mm -hmm. And uh, something happened and, and somebody hit them and, and he was killed. But uh, it was a shame. I, I say I, <laughs> I knew him well. I mean, they were they were such great people. Mm -hmm. Fact is, <laughs> during the flood here, we had the '64 flood. I wonder it affected you up there too much or not. We were really affected here, and uh, we couldn't get no power. We had no power for two weeks, and and it seemed pretty bad till all the hurricane. <laughs> 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 anyway, we were uh, uh, really tough. And uh, our house was all electric. We had no heat except we had a fireplace. And my wife, I, she couldn't keep a fire in the fireplace. <laughs> she and our oldest son learned to keep get a fire in there, and they managed to cook in there. Mm -hmm. And Christmas Day comes. Well, on Christmas Day, Jess and his wife invited us down to the house for Christmas dinner. Of all things, she cooked on a, a old wood range. And we had turkey and all the trimmings. <laughs> That's great. With the four of us and their nine kids in them. Wow. Oh, would you believe? Wow. But she was, I mean, that was a, uh, that's going beyond, above and beyond, y'all. Sure. And I never forgot.